Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto was the master of all spirits beasts. Here is a quick summary. After being beaten to the brink of death at 6, Naruto meets the Kaiubi. He unlocks his bloodlines, one able to heal any wound on others, another being able to see and communicate with spirits, he becomes the master of the spirit beasts. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Okajama. We have to do something about this. The beatings keep getting worse and worse, it's only a matter of time before they actually kill him or fatally damage him. He's only 5 years old and he's been through much more than half the ninja in this village. Wolf Kakashi shouted. He's right Hokage-sama, even if we do shadow him often, we can't always keep an eye on him ever since he was thrown out of the orphanage, the Anbu that have watched over him have taken a liking to the boy, can he not live in the Anbu HQ? Tiger Tenzo suggested. I knew it would come to this and I myself cannot adopt him, it would cause an uproar. Saritobi sighed and puffed his pipe and blowing out the smoke. Alright, I give you my permission for him to live in Anbu headquarters, though you two will be his guardians, since you both know his heritage, you Wolf, were his prize student, and you, Tiger, have the abilities of the first, so if the Kaiubi's chakra goes berserk, you can control it. Besides, he knows you from what I have heard. Arigatou, Hokage-sama. They both said and disappeared to tell Naruto of the good news. In the hospital. Naruto woke up in a sewer. Where am I? He wondered and walked around. Over here, come, find me. What was that? Who are you? Naruto asked the voice. Find me, come, Naruto. Naruto followed the voice until he walked into a large room with a cage with a word seal in the middle. Then found himself looking into large red slitted eyes. Whoa. Naruto jumped. Sorry about that kid, do you know who I am? The big fox. Naruto smiled. Hayubi sweat dropped. Air, if you want to put it in the simplest terms, yeah, I'm a big fox with nine tails, I, Air, kinda attacked your village, but it wasn't me. Wait, it was me. But I wasn't my fault, okay maybe a kinda is us. Naruto sweat dropped. I was being controlled so it wasn't my fault you gotta believe me kid. I ain't a bad guy, okay, I kinda am, only to my enemies though, especially that it's a team. Kaiubi continued to rant and apologize. I believe you. Naruto said without hesitation. Of course you wouldn't I may wait, what? You do? Yeah, for some reason I can see you're telling the truth, I can, see your spirit or soul, it's bright yet there is some malice, but I can sense it's good though, so I know you didn't mean to, no worries. Naruto said. That must be your Kekai Genkai kid, it allows you to see souls and spirits of all living things, it must have awakened from your last beating, by the way, I'm the great Kaiubi no Kitsune. But you can call me Kaiubi. Might as well tell you what really happened that night. And explained everything. Naruto took it well and after he was finished he introduced himself. Uzumaki Naruto. I'm gonna be the greatest Hokage ever believe it. I have a Kekai Genkai. That's so cool. Naruto shouted excitedly and started jumping around. Calm down kit before you hurt yourself. Just then Naruto accidentally rammed face first into one of the cage bars. Ow, Naruto mumbled rubbing his forehead. Kayubi sweat dropped. Anyways, I'm going to give you another Kekai Jinkai, I'll activate it for you as an apology for what housing me inside has put you through, it's called Shun Shun Rika, Orahem's ability in Bleach. Basically you have the ability of the rejection of events, a powerful ability indeed. Though I would try to only use it for helping others, this ability is fantastic for healing wounds, from missing limbs to shattered bones, this ability can heal them all, though it costs a hefty amount of chakra, but with me and you working together, it's no problem. Cool. Thank you Kai Ubi. Now I can save my precious people even better. Naruto threw his arms up in the air. Where am I anyways? In your mindscape kid, it's where all your memories reside, well, including me, so from now on can I have a mental connection to you? It lets me see what you see, hear what you hear, smell what you smell and so on, and it also lets me talk to you telepathically. But I need your permission for this is. Sure. You can be my friend. Naruto grinned. Not many would want me as a friend kid, you're interesting, at least I won't be bored now, time for you to go kid, people on the outside are waiting for you to wake up. Kaiubi said and pushed Naruto out of his mindscape, forcing him to wake up to see a white room. The hospital. Whoa, I haven't seen this much white, since, ever. Kaiubi wide-eyed. Naruto. Are you awake? Wolf called as he opened the door allowing him and Tiger to come in. Yeah I am. Naruto smiled. Even after all he's been through, he can still smile like that, Wolf saddened. Excellent, now we have a question or rather, a request Naruto. Wolf asked him. What is it? Naruto confused and tilted his head. We want you to move in with us at the Anbu HQ. Tiger said. Really? Can I? Can I? Naruto said and tackled Tiger with full force almost toppling him over. 
P of course, we asked you didn't we? Wolf chuckled. I can't wait. Naruto sat and continued to hug Tiger and let go and tackled Wolf giving him a hug. Tiger chuckled at his antics. I met Kai Ubi and he told me about my bloodline abilities and everything. They instantly stiffened. What did it tell you Naruto? Wolf cautiously asked. I'm not in it Kai Ubi complained. Naruto explained the whole situation to them, even allowing Kai Ubi take over at the night of the attack explanation. They calmed down after that. Naruto and Kai Ubi decided it was best that they kept his Kekai Genkais a secret for now. They left to go gather Naruto's things, which was just a few pieces of clothing, and headed to the Anbu HQ. An Anbu HQ. They showed Naruto his room, which was right between Wolf's and Tiger's room, just in case he needed any of them. They headed to the lounge to introduce him to everyone. They entered the lounge with Naruto nervously clinging to Wolf's leg, trying to make him smaller, also noticing the two ghosts that followed them. Guys, this is Naruto, he's going to be living with us today. Wolf said and pointed to the small child peeking from behind his legs, though he knew they were good people from his ability to see their souls, he was still shy. The female Anbu squealed kawaii. And glomped him. Do you think I should tell Doggy-chan about there's ghosts that's following him? Naruto wondered as he struggled to get free from the women's embrace. Lucky bastard. The men in the room thought. Not yet, wait until you're alone with him, the ghost seems to be attached to him dearly, try and talk to them, you can establish a spiritual connection with your ability. Remember only you can interact them after you have made the connection, unless you make a bond with another person, allowing them to see and touch ghosts like you can. You can make this ability permanent or temporary for that person, by doing this, you are creating a special bond, and that kind of connection leaves a mark, but they can't allow others to make spiritual bonds with ghosts like you can, they are also unable to pass it on to their children, just think of it as bestowing a crappier version of your bloodline limit. Thank Kami you have a lot of chakra, or you'll never be able to pull it off easily. The first ghost was a boy with black hair, he was about 13 years old, he has a pair of orange goggles. He was looking at Wolf with affection and worry in his eyes. The other ghost was a man with silver hair like Wolf with the same emotions as the other ghost in his eyes. Naruto attempted to make a connection with the ghosts, they were surprised when the link connected, and they both looked at Naruto, and the man said, you can see and hear us. Naruto made no visual expressions to tell them he heard him, but spoke to him mentally like Kai Ubi. I can hear you, and I can see and touch you as well, my Kekai Genkai allows me to do this. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto, what's yours? My name is Ichiha Abito. Abito smiled. Mine is Haddock Sakumo. Sakumo said. I'm glad someone of the living can hear and see us, it gets quite dull knowing people can't hear you other than other ghosts. Yeah you got that right, the other ghosts besides Sakumo here that we've met are such stiffs. Abito scoffed. What is your connection to Doggy-chan Naruto wondered. Sakumo and Abito started snickering at Wolf's nickname. I'm his dad Naruto-kun Sakumo smiled. His teammate. Abito grinned. Naruto, this is Falcon, Badger, Bear, Cat, Cobra, Tiger and me, Wolf. Wolf introduced pointing to each of them, and they waved back. So Birdie-san, Booger-kun, Teddy-chan, Kitty-chan, Hebe-san, Tigger-san, and Doggy-chan. Naruto wondered and tilted his head. Everyone sweat dropped in Bear, Badger, Tiger, and Wolf face faulted. Falcon, Cobra, Cat, Abito, and Sakumo snickering at their new nicknames. Another Anbu member walks in, he's missing his left arm. What's up guys? He asked casually. Hey monkey, Naruto-kun here gave these guys funny nicknames. Bugger-kun, Teddy-chan, Tigger-san, and Doggy-chan. Cobra grinned. Monkey started to laugh, trying to cover it with coughs but failing miserably. What you going to do now monkey, you lost your arm in that last mission, Cat saddened. I'll figure it out, Stag sighed and leaned against the couch. Naruto got an idea and walked up to Monkey and started to tug at his pant leg. What's up kid? I can heal it. Naruto said and pointed at his missing arm. Everyone raised their eyebrows or what just interested in what Naruto was going to do. What do you mean kid? You can't just regenerate an arm like that. Monkey said. But I can, let me show you. I'll prove that I can. Sit down so I can heal you. Naruto said continuing to tug at his pants. Monkey shrugged complied and sat down on the floor, interested in what he was going to do. Naruto put out his hands and said I reject. An orange-yellow barrier-like shape forming in front of his hands. Seconds later Monkey's arm started to regenerate, bones and muscles started to weave together forming an arm, then skin covered it. Monkey's eyes along with everyone else's widened. Soon the arm was completely regenerated. The orange-yellow barrier faded away. Phew. I told you I could do it. Naruto huffed. He thanks kid, I don't know what to say, Monkey stuttered, overjoyed he had his arm back and started to hug Naruto tightly. He began to flex and stretch his new arm a bit. Naruto smiled at him. That was amazing Naruto. How did you do that? The others including the ghost said at the same time. It's my Kekai Genkai, Naruto said slightly surprised at the volume. You have a bloodline limit. They all said. 
Yeah, I just told you, Naruto slightly nervous. We have to go see the Hokage about this, this ability is absolutely amazing. Kat said excitedly and they all grabbed Naruto and Shunshine to the Hokage's office. In the Hokage's office, Saratobi sighed from all the paperwork until a group of Anbu holding Naruto Shunshined in. May I ask what this sudden visit is about? Saratobi asked after placing a silencing jutsu. Then Wolf proceeded to explain everything, from Naruto's conversation with the Kaiubi, to the regeneration of Monkey's arm, to Naruto's bloodline ability. Naruto then explained about his connection to the Kaiubi and his Shun Shun Riko ability. He left his ability to see spirits out until later, and how it worked, the wider range, the longer it took for something to heal and stuff like that. Saratobi dropped his pipe at that. Naruto, with that ability, you could save a lot of lives, because of this, I want to ask if you would like to become the first and only Anbu Special Ops Medic, do you accept? You'll get a mask and a unique uniform. Think about what the uniform looks like yourself, Saratobi suggested. Of course old man. My dream is to become the best Hokage ever. Naruto said and started to run around the room and started to jump up and down. Ah kid, you might want to slow down before you hurt yourself a guy. Naruto then stumbled and fell on his face. Ow, he said as he rubbed his forehead. Do you ever learn kit? Kaiubi sweat dropped. Everyone else in the room including the ghost sweat dropped. But they were relieved he accepted to be an Anbu medic, medics were uncommon in this day and age, as not many people had the chakra control for it. Naruto didn't have this problem according to his bloodline limit, and the wounds and injuries he could heal far surpass regular medical jutsus. With Naruto on assisting on high-ranked missions, Anbu didn't have to worry as much from dying from injuries, as he could heal them like it was nothing. Wolf, Tiger, I'm putting you two in charge of his ninja training. Naruto's bloodline limit is a highly valuable asset to the village concerning high-ranking missions. We need to have him out on missions assisting other Anbu as soon as possible. No doubt his presence will greatly increase the success rate of missions, especially since less Anbu will suffer injury-related deaths or crippling. And please do keep this a secret, who knows what the council will do to him once they find out about it. Saratobi ordered. Hi, Hokage-sama. They all said. Oh and Naruto, since you gave me my arm back, the least I could do was show you my real face. Monkey said as he took off his mask for Naruto to see. He had black hair with amber eyes. My real name is Rikata Raihei, nice to meet ya. Naruto just stared at him and blurted out wow you have a face. I didn't know Anbu had faces. Everyone including the ghosts and Kaiubi face faulted. What do you mean Naruto-kun? Tiger said as he quickly recovered. I thought Anbu wear masks because they don't have faces. Naruto answered truthfully. Everyone sweat dropped. Ogi chan Can I talk to you alone please? Naruto asked. Uh, sure I guess, Wolf led Naruto out of the building and to the memorial stone where they would be alone. What was that about do you think? Cad asked. Who knows? Tiger shrugged. Well, as long as Wolf is with him he'll be fine. At the memorial stone. Okay what do you want to talk to me about Naruto? Wolf asked. Well, I have another bloodline ability, Naruto started. Wolf urged him to continue. I can see spirits and ghosts of living things. Naruto said. Wolf widened his eyes. Are you sure? Yes. I even see two of them right now, there's one that is young with goggles and a missing eye named Abito, and another one. An older silvered-haired man named Sakumo, he said that he was your daddy. Naruto smiled. They're always with you wherever you go. They looked worried. Wolf couldn't believe what he was hearing. I can let you talk to them if you want, maybe you can figure out why they look sad. Naruto offered. See can you really do that? Wolf tried to reassure himself that this wasn't some trick. But then again, Naruto couldn't have known about Abito and his father. Yes. Hold my hand please. Naruto held out his hand, and Wolf held it. Now close your eyes, when I tell you to, open them. Wolf nodded and closed his eyes and felt a weird chakra flow through him. Open them. Wolf opened his eyes and saw two transparent ghosts before him. Hey Kakashi, long time no see huh? Abito greeted. Hello son. Sakumo smiled. Abito, Dad, Kakashi widened his eyes. Kai. Naruto and the ghost sweat dropped. Abito proceeded to hit Kakashi over the head. Baka. We aren't a Jinjutsu. Abito reprehended him. Ow, that hurt. Wait a second, if you're ghosts, how are you able to hit me? Kakashi asked as he rubbed head. It's a part of my ability. Naruto explained. Anyways, the reason that Naruto did this was because you hold too many regrets in life son, you should learn not to blame yourself for things weren't your fault. Sakumo said with a sad smile. E, but I could have saved Abito that day, if I'd had known, Kakashi looked to the ground. But that's just it Kakashi, you couldn't have known that I was going to die during the mission, I don't blame you at all. Abito smiled. But on the bright side, I'm always with you because of that I, I told you that we would see what happens in the future, didn't I? Kakashi cheered up. Thank you, you too, and thank you Naruto, I feel like a great weight has been lifted off my chest. 
And dad, I never got to tell you, you who sacrificed everything for your friends, I can see you are a true hero, I'm proud to be your son. The three smiled while Sakuma was shocked, he gave his son a great hug with tears streaming down his face. Well would you look at that, I see the light, I can finally move on knowing I relayed my message and hearing those wonderful words, thank you son, I can finally see your mother now, Sakumo smiled as he disappeared into the heavenly light. I'm glad that my father has finally passed on, Kakashi smiled. But what about you Abito? I just told you. Cause of that I I am able to stay here. I'm sticking with you for better or for worse, besides, who else is going to laugh at you from the shadows and help you with your lame excuses? Seriously, they need a lot of work man. Abito said with a glint in his eye. Kakashi sweat dropped. Hey doggy chan, Naruto pulled on Kakashi's sleeve. Abito snickered at the nickname we wasn't used to yet, but stopped when Kakashi sent a glare his way. I can make it that you can talk to him whenever you want. It can be my gift to you for taking me into the Anbu and saved me the mob of angry people. Naruto cheered. You can do that. Wolf raised a brow. Yes. Here you go. Naruto pumped loads of spirit chakra into Kakashi, ultimately giving him the spirit gift. A tattoo appeared on his right shoulder, whatever design you want. Kakashi looked at the tattoo with an eyebrow raised, but quickly dismissed it, since it was an extremely small price to pay for the gift Naruto gave him. Besides it was a tattoo just like his Anbu one, so it wasn't even a big deal. There. All done. You can't pass it on to your children or let other people see and touch ghosts, but at least you can talk to ghosts now. Most ghosts that you will find would be in a certain area or around a certain person. They would usually be where they are because they have a bond with that place or person. Get it? Naruto said. Bakashi dumbly nodded and thanked him over and over again. He could see Abito every day now. Thanks Naruto. Now I can rub it in his face that Kakashi is old. Abito laughed as another glare was sent his way. Yay yeah, that's right. I called you old old man. Bakashi slumped his shoulders and turning their back to them pouting like a child mumbling things like I'm not old or I'm only 19. Naruto and Abito were laughing like crazy. Don't tell anyone about this okay doggy chan. I only want to give this gift to people who truly need it. Naruto explained. Bakashi nodded and thanked him again. Kit. You just unlocked something since you made your first spiritual bond. What is it Kaiu? Hold on a sec doggy chan, Kaiubi is saying that because I made a spiritual bond with you allowing you to interact with spirits like me, I've unlocked a new ability so just a minute. Naruto paused. Bakashi nodded so Abito and him started to chat while they waited. You and the scarecrow have the ability to call out your spirit beasts. Spirit beasts. Yep, basically the spiritual bond increases the person's spiritual energy, and that spiritual energy allows one to house a spiritual guardian, aka a spirit beast, because they take the form of animals. Because you have a spiritual bond with the scarecrow, your spirit beast and his have the ability to do combination attacks, or basically combining two attacks to create a whole new attack with different effects. That is so cool. By the way, you can tell the Scarecrow that that kid Abito or whatever can become his spiritual guardian, but he'll have to take an animal form during battle or whenever he is summoned for it to work, and he also has to agree to the idea, just make him recite the vows. I, put full name here, wish for, ghost's full name here, to be my spiritual guardian, do you accept? And the ghost kid to recite. I, ghost's name here, accept the position as a spiritual guardian for, the person's name here, and will aid him or her to the best of my abilities whenever he or she wishes and make the ghost kid put his hand over the scarecrows after reciting the vows. Okay. Thanks Kaiu. Hey listen to this. Naruto said. Bakashi and Abito gave Naruto his full attention, while Naruto explained the concept of having a spirit beast and how they can work together. Wow. It puts a whole new level of teamwork into the ranks with this ability. Kakashi exclaimed even happier that he made the spirit bond with Naruto, while Abito nodded. And the best part is that Abito can become your spiritual guardian. Naruto cheered. What? Kakashi and Abito shouted. I can become his spirit guardian. Abito said while well, Kakashi said he can become my spirit guardian. They both said this at the same time. Oh uh, yeah, that's what I just said, Naruto deadpanned. How? They both said. Okay okay sheesh. Naruto sighed and told them about having Abito as his spirit beast, like how he had to take an animal form when summoned, and the vows they would have to recite in order for the bond to be created. They took their stances and recited them. I, had a Kakashi, wish for Ichiha Abito to be my spiritual guardian, do you accept? Kakashi vowed. I, Ichiha Abito, accept the position as a spiritual guardian for had a Kakashi, and will aid him to the best of my abilities whenever he wishes. Abito vowed. And put their hands together. Then a seal appeared over Abito's and Kakashi's hand, again, up to you what it looks like, and transparent white chains erupted from the seal wrapping around their arms, chaining them together. The chains glowed in a warm light before disappearing. 
Ibido gained a silver bangle that was positioned on his right arm, while Kakashi's tattoo glowed and changed its color to silver, but keeping the same design. There. Now you guys are spiritually bonded. Naruto chimed. Tsu, how do I summon Ibido to battle? Kakashi said in a happy tone, knowing that his best friend will be able to fight alongside with him. Just make the scarecrow focus a spark of chakra to the tattoo and say the kid's name, either mentally or verbally, it doesn't matter. And tell the kid if he wants to summon himself without the scarecrow's permission, all he has to do is to focus his own chakra to the bangle, he's able to access his own now because of the bond. The better he is in battle, the more chakra he is able to use, so basically he has to train like everybody else to increase their reserves. Just tell them to repeat the same action if they want to uh, recall the kid back into his ghost form to rest or something. By the way, only those with the ability of the spirits like you and the scarecrow can understand what spirit beasts are saying, so when the kid is in his beast form, which reflects who he is by heart, only you are the scarecrow and understand what he says if he talks. The ghost kid can only have two elemental affinities, his own main one when he was alive, which should be fire because of his family and the scarecrows. Naruto explained how and the abilities of spirit beasts. Abido was relieved he could summon himself just in case Kakashi couldn't, if he's unconscious or something like that, and Kakashi relaxed as well. They were especially surprised by the fact that Abido could access his chakra because he bonded with Kakashi and the fact about his elemental affinities. Kakashi summoned Abido by saying his name and putting a minute amount of chakra into the tattoo, which glowed along with Abido's bangle for a brief moment. Abido was sucked into Kakashi's chest and expelled in front of him in a bolt of fire and electricity, revealing a very large pure black wolf with an onyx eye and the other with a scar like Kakashi's running over it. The silver bangle shining brightly in the sunlight on his right arm. Abido in wolf form on all fours was up to Kakashi's shoulders in height. Whoa. All three of them said and marveled at Abido's spirit beast form. I look so cool. Abido said and started to run around the area. A wolf is his heart's true form huh? The wolf symbolizes loyalty to comrades, very fitting of you Abido. Kakashi smiled as he saw Abido continue to run around the area in his wolf form, breathing in fresh air and interacting with the living world for the first time in years since his death. Wow. He looks big enough for you to ride Dogi-chan. Naruto grinned. Seriously, I wasn't expecting him to be this big, Kakashi said as he watched Abido, genuinely happy bonding with him gave him freedom like this. Does it consume chakra for him to be out of his ghost form? Nope, the kid naturally draws spiritual energy from the environment, so as long as the scarecrow doesn't recall him, or if the kid runs out of chakra or is too wounded, he can stay out as long as he wants. Naruto relayed what the Kaiubi told him and Kakashi nodded and was glad that there wasn't a limit as long as those scenarios didn't happen. Why don't you summon your spirit beast kit and no, it can't be me, you have to wait until you're older to handle the amount of spirit energy I have, plus, it's overkill for me to battle others. But don't worry, your bloodline allows you to house five spirit beasts, so one spot is for me for when you're older, you can summon your first one now, but don't try and summon another, your body can't handle it yet. So just say. I summon forth my destined spirit beast, now it's my turn to summon a spirit beast. Naruto said. Kakashi and Abito stopped and watched Naruto. I summon forth my destined spirit beast. Naruto shouted and was encased in a bright light, and from his chest erupted a beam of golden fire, and from the fire emerged a large golden lion with a dark gold mane and sky blue eyes. The beast was as big as Abido. All three stared at it wide-eyed. Why do you desire my power Naruto? The lion asked staring down at Naruto. I want your power because I need it to become Hokage so I can protect my precious people. And have everyone acknowledge me for who I am, not for whom I contain. Naruto shouted his pure honest answer. The lion continued to stare at Naruto, as if to see he was lying, then gently smiled, you are honest and true to your resolution of heart, I accept you as my master. Not master. A friend. Naruto smiled brightly. Kakashi and Abito grinned as if they knew what he was going to say. A friend, I will aid you through any obstacle, as long as you stay true to the resolution you have named me if you wish. Um, how about, Suryoku? Naruto suggested. Light strength yes, I like that name, Suryoku nodded. Kakashi and Abito liked the name also. As your spirit beast you may call me out whenever you wish for my aid. Suryoku said and retreated back into Naruto in a form of golden flames. Should Tiger be in on this? Kakashi asked as he leaned on Abito. Okay. Let's go kidnap Tiger. Naruto chimed. Kakashi and Abito had a glint in their eye and smirked. Abito? Kakashi asked. Let's do it. Abito grinned, showing his sharp canines then retreated back into Kakashi and turned back into his ghost form. Kakashi then grabbed Naruto and sunshined into the Anbu HQ. Anbu HQ. Tiger was having a chat with Kat then Naruto and Kakashi sunshined into the lounge. 
Naruto tackled Tiger to the floor, then Kakashi proceeded to bound Tiger with ninja wire, while Naruto ripped off his mask during his confusion, gagged him and bound his ankles together with more ninja wire. Then Kakashi hoisted the struggling Anbu member onto his shoulder. Abido was rolling on the floor laughing during the entire time. Then Naruto grabbed Kakashi's free hand and shunshined in the middle of the forest of death. Uh, what just happened? Cad asked no one in particular. I think Tiger was kidnapped by Wolf and Naruto, monkey deadpan. Meh. All the Anbu that witnessed the event just shrugged it off like it was a daily occurrence. The forest of death. The trio and one ghost arrived in the forest. Kakashi dropped Tiger who was still struggling to get free. Naruto untied him, and Tiger took the cloth that was gagging him out of his mouth. What the hell was that for? Tiger shouted at them. We wanted to let you in on our little secret. Kakashi explained. Tiger immediately put the kidnapping back in his mind as he dusted off his pants. Well, it's like this, Naruto started and explained everything about the spiritual bonding to the ability of the spirit beasts. So, we wanted to ask if you want to make a bond with me. Naruto offered. If you wanted to talk about this you didn't have to kidnap me. Tiger scolded them. But it wouldn't be as fun, Kakashi pouted as Abito laughed while Naruto nodded. Geez, yeah sure, I'd love to make a spiritual bond with you Naruto. Git, I forgot to tell you something, when you make a spiritual bond with another person, you will have the ability to sense where they are, it's not completely accurate, but it gives a good range of where they are. Also you can summon each other, just focus on one or more people with a spiritual bond, while sending enough chakra to the tattoo, as long as the person who is being summoned agrees, poof. There they are. Okay. Thanks Kayu. Naruto relayed the new information to them. Hmm, that's an interesting, very useful if we are captured, Kakashi muttered. Yeah, it gives me the ability to find you when you're late too. Tiger smiled. Oh, Kakashi mumbled while Abito snickered. Anyways, let's make the bond now. Naruto said and held out his hand. Tiger took his hand and felt a strange chakra enter him, and a tattoo appeared on his left shoulder, though the pattern was different than Kakashi's. Up to you what it looks like. Yours is different than mine, Kakashi said as he held out his right shoulder with a tattoo. I guess it's different for everyone, Naruto said. Wasp. Abito greeted Tiger. Tiger jumped in surprise to see the transparent form of Abito. Is this your friend Wolf Senpai? Tiger asked. Yup. He's also my spiritual guardian, he transforms into a spirit beast when he is summoned like so, Kakashi explained and summoned Abito in his wolf form. Well it's nice to meet you too. I'm sure you already know my name. Tiger nodded covering his slight shock at the size of Abito's form. Well enough with the introductions, let's see what spirit beast you summon. Naruto shouted. I summon forth my destined spirit beast. Tiger shouted. From his chest erupted green light and took the form of a large stag. It was a pure white with sapphire eyes, the antlers were golden. From its shoulder it was as tall as Abito standing on all fours. How beautiful, Tiger complimented from the stag's beauty. Why do you wish for my power Tenzo? The stag questioned him. I wish for your power to help and protect those I care for. Tenzo answered without hesitation. The stag stared at him for a moment. You are honest and true to your resolution of heart, I accept you as my master. The stag bowed before Tenzo. You may name me as you see fit. Tenzo thought for a moment. I'll name you Hayashi, Woods or Forest. I like that name. I shall aid and serve you, as long as you stay true to the resolution you have presented me. Hayashi bowed and disappeared into Tenzo's chest. You guys might want to train with your spirit beasts, rushing into battle without knowing what they can do is just plain stupid. Ayubi says we should train with our spirit beasts so we know their abilities. Naruto suggested. Good idea. Kakashi agreed. Tsuyoku Naruto summoned and a golden lion appeared. Whoa, so that's your spirit beast? Tenzo asked. Yup. Naruto nodded and climbed onto Tsuyoku's back, riding him. Hayashi. Tenzi called and the white stage burst forth. You called master? The stag asked. We need to get to know each other's abilities. Tenzo said and Hayashi nodded. Very well. I'll go first. Tsuyoku joined in. My current abilities are Call of the Wild is the ability for me to summon a pride of lions to aid us in battle. Roar of Courage increases all nearby allies who hears it attack power by 30% temporarily. Vestal Wrath in which I go berserk, my fur turns red and I grow larger in size, my attack power increases by 30% for about 2 minutes, this also affects you Naruto, you will feel the power increase, but you will become more beast-like in character. Feral Form. Fire which makes my mane, tail, eyes and paws become fire, this allows me to utilize my fire techniques to its full potential, but costs a good amount of chakra. Gears of War which gives me battle armor to help protect myself, I also have a saddle on my back if you wish to ride on my back. Prowl allows me to go stealth or basically become invisible and hide my presence, though not perfect, it is still very good. I have the basic fire techniques such as Firebolt, Fire Blast, Fire Nova, and Molten Claws. Cool. 
Naruto cheered. As for me, Hayashi continued. I have Call of the Forest this restores 30% of all nearby allies' chakra. Spirit Barrier which creates a barrier to protect allies within in, it absorbs a set amount of damage before it is broken. Stampede is when I multiply myself and charge to create a stampede. Nature's grace increases my abilities of the earth element, I will have a green aura around me. I also have Gears of War. I have the basic earth abilities such as Tremor, Earth Bolt, Entangling Roots, and Thorn Maze. The Restoration of Chakra. Tenzo sputtered. My turn. My turn. Abito barked. You know your abilities? Kakashi asked. Yeah, they just kinda came to me you know. When I first went into this wolf form. Abito said. And you didn't tell me? Kakashi glared. You didn't ask. Abito deadpanned and Kakashi slapped his forehead. Well go on, Kakashi urged him. I can do Furious Howl which summons wolves to help us, kinda like your Ninkin Kakashi. Aspect of the pack which increases our speed and agility by 30% temporarily. I also have Bestial Wrath in Feral Form. Fire Feral Form. Lightning whichever you need, even the ability Gears of War. I got the same basic fire abilities as Suryoku, but my lightning abilities are Lightning Bolt, Thunder Fang, Lightning Storm, and Lightning Armor. Wow, Naruto has the ability to increase attack power, I have the ability to restore chakra, and Wolf has the ability to increase speed and agility, it's as if we were made to be a team. Tenzo remarked. Naruto and Kakashi thought about this and thought this was true. After that they all went off to train with their spirit beasts. Kakashi and Tenzo taught Naruto how to owe the tree walking and water walking exercise, awakening his bloodlines helped with his terrible control, so he was able to master them a lot quicker. I guess we should let Jiji know about this huh? Naruto said. Yeah I guess, Kakashi muttered. It would be wise, this way, we can go as a three-man team together on missions more often. Tenzo said. I guess you're right about that. Kakashi sighed. They all recalled their spirit beasts, and Abito returned to his ghost form. What a good workout. Abito stretched. We were able to perform effective combo attacks. Tenzo smiled and nodded. Let's go. Naruto said as he tugged on Tenzo's leg. Then they shunshined into the Hokage's office. Hokage's office. Saratobi sensed visitors and Naruto, Kakashi, and Tenzo appeared. Two visits in one day. All right, what happened this time? Saratobi asked. Well it's like this Jiji, Naruto started and explained everything. Wow, Saratobi stuttered. May I see them? And they nodded. Abito. Kakashi summoned and Abito transformed into his wolf form. Suryoku. Naruto called and the large golden lion appeared. Hayashi. Tenzo shouted and a large white stag burst forth. Hello. All three beasts said at the same time. Whoa, well considering the information you told me, I'm going to give you a choice. I can create a specialized and secretive team just for spirit beast holders, of course, to prevent that retarded council from forcing Naruto to use his abilities to have more beast holders. This is going to be an S-class secret. And this team will work for me and me alone. That all right with you? Suratobi suggested. Sure. They all said lazily. I'll name this team. Team Tire A, Great Spirit, Team Tire A is now fully operational and will only take missions from me and me alone. Is this acceptable? Suratobi asked. I like that. That sounds so cool. Naruto cheered. The adults chuckled. Well I'll let you do your own thing for now. Take these cloaks, you can design your team symbol on them, and your names and mask will be designed after your spirit beast, since Naruto's is a lion, his mask and codename will be lion, so here. Dismissed. Saratobi said as he handed them cloaks and masks for them, instead of red markings like traditional Anbu had on their masks, theirs was blue. Hey wait. Don't you want a spiritual bond Jiji? Naruto offered. Are you sure Naruto? Saratobi asked slightly surprised. Sure. Naruto said and grabbed his hand and pumped spiritual chakra into him. Saratobi felt the chakra enter him and a tattoo appeared on his right forearm. Now just say the words Jiji. Naruto smiled. I summon forth my destined spirit beast. Saratobi called and a burst of orange light appeared. It took of a large brown bear. Why do you wish for my power Hirazan? The bear asked. It is my duty as the Hokage to sustain the will of fire and protect the village. Saratobi answered. Is your duty as the Hokage the only reason? The bear questioned. No, I want to protect this village like my predecessors, I protect it because of my family and precious ones. Hirazan stated. The bear continued to look at Saratobi. You are honest and loyal to your resolution of heart, I accept you as my master. The bear said. You may name me as you wish. Hashirama, after the first Hokage, my sensei. Saratobi said. As you wish. Hashirama said and bowed. My abilities are Roar of Sacrifice, it nullifies all damage to you for one minute and transfers 30% of the total damage taken towards me. Bash which I bash an enemy with some electricity to temporarily stun them. 
Bestial wrath and feral form my paws are coated with fire, my eyes become fire, I have two rune bracers on my arms and a spiked collar around my neck. Gears of War gives me battle armor a saddle for you to ride on. My basic fire abilities are Firebolt, Fire Blast, Fire Nova and Molten Claws. Dot. He then disappeared into Siratobi. Thank you Naruto, anyways, you are dismissed. Siratobi smiled. The trio shun shined off. A year later, Team Tyra A only had a few missions, though Naruto couldn't come on the high-ranking ones, he was only allowed on CB ranks at best. His training was coming along nicely, he helped many Anbu members with their injuries, so they ended up just making a medical ward in the Anbu HQ. So basically, Anbu had their own hospital and medics. Saratobi thought that he should have done this earlier, it prevented identities of Anbu being discovered and covered other secrets. Naruto was in charge of a branch in the emergency care ward, he was in charge of the flesh injuries and wounds branch. Anbu could be administered into the branch's operation room and be immediately cared for. I tell you, that kid, Naruto, is a godsend, the boy helped me out with a crushed leg, thought I would have to retire, no normal medic could repair it. And Anbu with a boar mask said. I know, I thought I was a goner with some parts of my organs missing, the regular medics could only hold off the bleeding until I got to the operation room, then the kid comes out and restores everything to perfect health, if he wasn't there, I know I would have died. I owe the kid my life. Another Anbu with a hawk mask told him. I remember being on a mission with him, I thought he was just gonna slow us down, when Hokage-sama insisted on him coming, saying that even though we are just getting rid of some stray nukenins, that they were demolition types. I thought the kid was going to get killed, the kid cause of his height couldn't keep up that well with us, though his speed is at least Chunin level, then the kid calls out this huge ass lion and rides it beside us. The mission is all good, then I accidentally step on a mind trigger, blowing my leg to bits, then he lands right beside me and says I reject or something and regenerates a whole new leg for me, I was totally dumbfounded and finally understood why Hokage-sama made him come with us. An Anbu with a horse mask joined in. And the conversation continues with more Anbu saying what happened to them. In Anbu lounge, looks like Naruchan is getting popular. Kakashi smiled. Can you blame them? Naruto is a savior to more than half the Anbu enlisted in the ranks, he's easy to get along with too. The Anbu like him so much that some of them started to teach Naruto some of their techniques and styles. Naruto even made a spiritual bond with Anko, Cobra. I should have known she would have had Big Snake as her spirit beast, she even named it Basilisk. What element was it again? Tenzo asked. It was a water type I think, I was nearly hit with one of its acid bullets once, the acid melted through the wall. Kakashi shuddered. Anko was absolutely giddy when she found out that Basilisk could use poison and venom, said that made her life as an interrogator a lot more fun, Enzo shuddered. Then again she was even happier that holding a spirit beast purified her curse seal, thus getting rid of it, then the spiritual bonding tattoo appeared where the curse seal used to be. Eyes, shouldn't you be teaching him or something? Abito suddenly joined in. There, Tenzo and Kakashi started. Well, it's Anko's turn today, Tenzo paled. Ahahaha. She used you as targets for demonstrations last time you guys went didn't she? Abito laughed. Yeah, I ain't going. Kakashi stated. Anyways, did you master that technique you've been working on? Duh. I got the ability fire shield down. I'm also got immolation mastered too. My chakra capacity tripled since last time. Volt tackle is mastered too. Abito declared. So, did Hayashi master anything new? Yes, me and him worked on a very powerful ability, finally mastered it. It's called nature's war cry it brings nearby trees and plants to life and attacks all enemies within range. We've also increased the power of his basic attacks, helping him increase his reserves. Tenzo answered. Yikes, Kakashi surprised. Deem Tyre A, I summon you Saratobi. Well looks like we are needed. Tenzo said. Yep, let's go. Kakashi nodded. And they both allowed themselves to be summoned by Saratobi, disappearing from where they were standing in burst of golden light. Anbu training grounds, you hear that Gaki? Anko asked Naruto. Yeah, looks like Jiji needs us. Naruto said and they both also disappeared in a burst of golden light. Okage office, all four of them appeared in a puff of smoke. Whatcha need Jiji? Naruto asked. Well, I thought about your idea and decided that you could go through with it Naruto. The incident with Kumo is heavy on one of the candidates though. Saratobi said. Alright. Naruto cheered. Can someone fill us in? Kakashi asked. Oh sorry, you see, I found out that two Hayuga children were good candidates to our team. Naruto answered. The heiress, Hayuga Hinata, and a branch member, Hayuga Niji. I see, adding to our little family a Gaki. Anko grinned. Yup Naruto chimed. Let's go. And darted out the window, breaking it. Yahoo. And you could see him jumping across the roofs in the distance. Everyone sweat dropped. Doesn't anyone here know how to use the door? Saratobi grumbled. You know what, screw the rules, I'm the Hokage. And jumped out the same window. 
The three left in the room sweat dropped again. They sighed and followed their leader. Hayuga compound. They arrived at the entrance and were greeted by guards. They went in and met up with Hayuga Hiyashi, Hinata, and Niji. What is this meeting about Hokage-sama if it concerns my daughter and nephew? Hiyashi asked politely, he was really curious because he was asked to put up a privacy jutsu in the room. Please do not repeat this to anyone as it is a S-class secret understand. Saratobi said seriously. The Hayuga stiffened and nodded. Well the Anbu you see behind me are part of a secret squad, answering only to me, they are wolf, stag, lion, and snake, and your daughter and nephew are perfect candidates to join, but Naruto here is the founder, he will explain everything now. Saratobi said and Naruto took over explaining everything. I see, this is a great honor, do you two accept? Hiashi asked Niji and Hinata. Why yes father, I would love to J join. Hinata stuttered. Yes, Hiashi sama Though I have to tell you that the birdcage seal will be purified during the ritual, meaning that it will get rid of it for good. Naruto said. They widened their eyes. It doesn't matter, it's a good thing actually, who knows what the elders would do to Niji when they find out about this. I was hoping to find a way to get rid of that stupid seal. Hiashi sighed. I forgot to tell you Niji, there's a ghost that looks like a copy of Hiashi-sama that's attached to you, do you know him? Naruto wondered. Enzo, Anko, Kakashi, and Saratobi noticed that too, but waited for Naruto to say it. The Hayugas gasped at that. Take my hands, I will let you talk to him. Naruto said and held out his hands. They grabbed it and felt a foreign chakra enter their systems. The ghost became visible to them. Niji, why did you become like this? I wanted you to be happy. Why have you grown bitterness in your heart? The ghost asked. As Ashi, Hiashi started. Add. Niji cried out and Tackle hugged his father. Niji, I sacrificed myself for the sake of the village and your safety, please understand that, my brother tried to stop me, but I insisted, if I was sacrificed, the Byakugan would be safe, and so would my brother. As his brother, I felt the need to protect him, don't blame your uncle for this, Hizashi smiled sadly. I promised dad. I'm sorry Hiashi-sama, Niji sniffed. It's alright, I understand what you saw. Hiashi smiled. Please protect him from those corrupt elders brother. Hizashi requested. Of course. You have saved my life, but what really matters is that you're my brother, family should always help each other out. Hiashi promised. Thank you, I can see it, the light, I have no more regrets, goodbye Niji, I love you. Hizashi honestly smiled and faded away. Niji was trying to stop his tears. After a minute or so, he stopped. Niji, Hinata and Hiashi-sama, take my hand again so I can make the bond. Naruto said. Me as well. Hiashi gasped. I know you won't abuse it, I can see it, your soul, it is bright, I can tell you are a very good person at heart. You are worthy as well. Naruto smiled. They took his hand and felt a large amount of strange chakra flow into their bodies. A tattoo appeared on Hinata's left hand, Niji's right hand, and Hiashi's appeared on his left hand as well. Niji took off the bandages covering his forehead to reveal the caged bird seal completely gone without a trace, he grinned. Hiashi-sama why don't you go first? Naruto said. I summon forth my destined spirit beast. Hiashi called. A large link slightly smaller than Suryoku appeared in a burst of white light. Why do you wish for my power Hiashi? The link said calmly. I wish for the power to protect my family and remove the burden of the branch members. Hiashi replied truthfully. The links narrowed its eyes. You are most honest and true to this resolution, I accept you as my master so long you stay true to the resolution you have presented me. The links bowed, you may name me as you wish. Izashi, after my brother who saved my life. Hiashi smiled. I am honored to be named after your brother and savior. I shall tell you of my abilities in the evening. Hizashi bowed again and disappeared into Hiashi. Your turn Hinata-chan. Naruto said. I summon forth my destined spirit beast. Hinata said, managing not to stutter. A white lioness that was the same size as Hizashi burst forth in a torrent of sistral clear water. Why do you wish for my power Hinata? The lioness asked. I want to change myself, I want to be a respected and honorable clan leader to forever change the corrupt ways of the Hayuga clan. I need to do this to protect my family and also my friends. Hinata shouted. You have honorable goals young one, you are pure of heart and do not lie, I accept you as my master. The lioness said and bowed. Name me as you wish. Yuki, it means bravery, valor, courage, and snow, it's perfect for you. Hinata smiled. I love it, thank you. Yuki said and disappeared into Hinata. Niji, you're up. Naruto grinned. Niji nodded. I call forth my destined spirit beast. Niji yelled. A shining sky blue falcon appeared in a burst of electricity. The falcon was large enough for him to ride on. Why do you wish for my power Niji? The falcon looked down upon Niji. I wish for the power to aid my friends and family in achieving their goals and dreams to make the future a better place. Niji stated with resolve. The falcon continued to look down upon Niji for a moment. 
I accept your resolve to help others with their goals, a noble one indeed. I accept you as my master as long as you do not stray away from the resolution you have present me. The falcon landed in front of Niji and bowed. Name me as you wish. Sakurin, it means Cyclone. Niji said. A fitting name. I look forward to serving you master for many years to come. Sakurin said and disappeared into Niji. I here be in state you three as part of Team Tyre. Here are your cloaks with the team symbol designed on them, and you can pick up your new masks next week at my office. Hiashi shall be Lynx, Niji will be Falcon, and Hinata is Lioness. After explaining the need to train and getting to know them, the Hokage mumbled and said that he had paperwork to do. This left the team to properly introduce themselves they decided to go to training ground 2 for privacy. Kakashi helped Niji with his spirit beast because it was also a lightning type like Abido. Tenzo helped Hiashi since his Ashi was an earth type. Anko helped Hinata, since Yuki was a water type. It was a great surprise to everyone that Yuki was able to do ice techniques, though since ice was a sub-element, Yuki wasn't able to harbor it to its full potential. They also found out that Yuki was more a support type, since she had the ability to heal wounds to a certain degree. They parted ways after a few hours of training. Three years later, Naruto was 10 years old. Team Tyre was going along nicely, they trained greatly with their spirit partners, learning new techniques and mastering old ones with more efficiency. There were rumors flying around the ninja ranks and the civilian population, they were talking about an elite specialized team working directly and only under the Hokage that had a 99% mission success rate. The council, well the civilian half actually, demanded to know the identities of the team and wanted them to share their secrets with them, especially Danzo, wanted to know the source of power, all rumors stating that they could summon large beasts that were not from summoning contracts to aid them in battle, using techniques that were never seen before. They even got wind of Naruto's healing bloodline and demanded him to submit and go under the Kra clan restoration act, which instated that he at least had to have three wives, each bearing two children, but the Hokage and the clan heads, especially Hiashi, were revolted that they wanted to turn him into breeding stock for the sake of his bloodline and downright refused immediately, stating that the civilian council had no power over the ninja population and that they were overstepping their boundaries. Naruto didn't find anyone he could trust to add to the team, though they didn't really care. Anko was having too much fun with interrogation when Basilisk learned how to do special Jinjutsu and also learned how to summon snake minions, each with a different venom with different effects. Abido and Kakashi were in almost perfect synchronization for teamwork, it was even better when Naruto with Suryoku and Tenzo with Hayashi joined the fray. The three were the team's main battle force, as their teamwork and combination attacks were practically flawless. Anada proved to be the team's back support as she studied medical jutsu along with Naruto, though since his chakra control wasn't good enough on that, he mostly learned about medical herbs, antidotes, medicines, poisons, and the human anatomy. Hinata learned all that along with medical techniques. Naruto's training was coming along nicely, it was around the level of low mid jounin level, he mastered several styles that Kaiubi taught him, while Kakashi, Tenzo, and Hiashi pointed out his mistakes and openings. Anada gained more confidence in herself and created her own style of Jaiwakan, her style was to be as graceful as water and to flow smoothly like a river, this needed great flexibility because it looked like she was dancing around her enemies. With this style along with chakra scalpels, she turned out to be a very deadly opponent. Niji stopped being stiff and started to show more joyful emotions, he bore no more hatred towards Hiashi and Hinata, but still disliked the arrogant pricks of the main branch. Akashi and Tenzo retired from Anbu and returned to being regular Jounin, they felt like they needed a break from all the dangerous high-class missions. They were even considering taking a Genin team which Abido pointed out that they would definitely be spoiled brats, so they were wondering if it was worth it. Naruto was still greatly needed by the Anbu ranks, as pretty much all the Anbu protested against him leaving HQ, seeing how one way or another, they were healed by him a friend, her teammate's life was saved because of him, a mission would have failed if it weren't for him, and other reasons. In the end they gave Naruto a special seal that was tattooed on the back of his neck, the seal let Naruto know whenever he was needed at HQ because of an emergency, since the Hokage could just summon him for a mission, which they agreed that he would only go if they absolutely needed him. With all the money Kakashi, Tenzo, and Naruto saved over the years, they bought themselves a nice house, seeing how they were so used to living together. Tenzo pointed out he could have just made one, but they said that it would lack appliances, electricity, and plumbing. In Hokage office, Saratobi was thinking about this decision for a long time, it wasn't healthy for Naruto to only spend time with adults, with the exception of Abido, Niji, and Hinata. He thought that Naruto should interact with more kids his age, sending him on high-class missions was not healthy for any 10-year-old. He sent a signal via the spirit bond to summon Kakashi, Tenzo, and Naruto. The trio poofed into the office in front of Saratobi. Why did you summon us Jiji? Naruto asked. Well Naruto, I want you to attend the academy. 
Saratobi sat and covered his ears waiting for his outburst. Kakashi and Tenzo did as well. Say what? Naruto shouted. Why? I'm already a jounin. I don't want to go to an academy full of spoiled brats, fangirls, and arrogant pricks with ten-foot poles up their asses. The Anbu hidden in the room along with Tenzo and Kakashi were snickering at the remark. But he has a point there, Kakashi and Tenzo thought. No buts Naruto, you need to interact with more people your age besides Hanada and Niji. This will be an undercover mission, you will be in the same class as the clan heirs, we need to keep them safe. Saratobi said sternly though was somewhat inwardly agreeing with Naruto. TCH, fine. Naruto mumbled. Great. You'll be entered into their class starting tomorrow. Saratobi said while making the proper documents. But at least make one of them my Jounin sensei. If I'm going to do this, I'm gonna need some help covering my abilities if I show them by accident. Naruto said while pointing to Kakashi and Tenzo, who really didn't mind, it gave them something to do and they were already his senseis, so they had no problem with it. I guess you have a point there, alright. Saratobi nodded. Dismissed. And they jumped out the open window. The door exists for a reason. Saratobi shouted after them, he got laughs in return, and started mumbling no manners are always the window. The Anbu sweat dropped. Market area, they ate lunch at the Raymond stand and went through the marketplace, just chatting and browsing wares. The conversation they were having was drowned out by the crowd of people, who of which were mostly couples. So Naruto, I heard that you have another spirit beast partner, mind telling us about it? Kakashi asked. How did you know? I was going to surprise you. Naruto leered. I felt another presence within you buddy, as a spiritual guardian myself as well as a ghost, I can kinda sense these things, I can feel the Kaiubi and Suryoku, but who's the third? Abito mentioned. Didn't think Ghost Kid could sense those things, same here. Well I he's a wind spirit beast, his name is Kurgain. He's a pure black griffin. He's pretty big. He can fly too. It's so cool flying up in the sky. I'll take you guys for a ride next time. He can carry up to three people, that's what he said at least. He came to me in a dream asking if I wished for its power and why, I told him, and he accepted me like Suryoku. Naruto explained. The two were impressed and slightly jealous that he could fly, but glad that Kurigane could carry up to three people with no problem. Any new abilities we should know of? Tenzo asked. Naruto explained Kurigane's abilities to them. They listened with their full attention. Eyes, have you noticed that there are a lot of couples today? Abito said slightly nervous about it. Now that you mention it, Kakashi muttered and looked around, he was right, there were much more couples than normal, and even being more intimate in public. Tenzo covered Naruto's eyes when they passed a couple making out much too passionately for him to see, considering they haven't had the talk with Naruto properly, as they decided he should hit puberty first. Huh? What's going on Tenzo Niasen? Naruto asked confused on why his eyes were being covered. Nothing you need to see or know about yet Naruto. Tenzo replied and took off his hands after they weren't inside anymore. Okay, Naruto said as they passed more stores with a lot of pink and red decorations. Hey kid, I got a bad feeling. Naruto wondered what Kaiubi was talking about until he just remembered something. Hey guys, ain't today Valentine's Day? Bakashi stopped dead in his tracks. What's wrong? Naruto asked and tilted his head. Bakashi senpai. Tenzo wondered. Kai A girl in her late teens screamed. I found him girls. It's had a Kakashi. They jumped at the sudden loud noise and turned around to look behind them. No way. Where? Another girl shouted. There he is. One more yelled. Soon a whole mob of girls appeared, all wearing a pinner t-shirt or an armband that said, they had a Kakashi fan club they all ranged from their pre-teens to late twenties and even a couple of early thirties. All of them holding gifts. Kakashi-sama. They chorused and darted after him. Oh shit. Kakashi shouted. Come back Kakashi-sama. One screamed. We love you Kakashi-sama. Another shouted. We'll show you a good time Kakashi-sama. A girl yelled. Run away. Kakashi shouted and they ran for it. Wait if they're your fangirls, why am I running away too? Tenzo said as he was running alongside Naruto and Kakashi. Look. It's, Tenzo-sama. A girl with an armband that said the Yamato Tenzo fan club shouted. It really is him. Another girl with the pin that said the same thing screamed. Hi Aya. Tenzo-sama. Wait for us. The leader shouted and shot after him, along with the rest of the members of the Tenzo fan club. Both fan clubs were a mix of ninjas and civilians and were chasing after them at shocking speeds. Tenzo-sama. Marry me. A girl proposed. Don't run away Tenzo-sama. A girl yelled. And you see how much we love you Tenzo-sama. The leader screamed. That's why. Kakashi deadpanned and increased his speed along with Naruto, leaving him slightly behind. Oh my god. Tenzo shouted and ran frantically away from his fan club whom he didn't know had existed until today, sure he had noticed some girls giggling and blushing when he was around, but just shrugged it off, but now he knew why. Go go go. 
Kakashi yelled in desperation because the girls were catching up. Time for our escape. Plan E. Guys go with plan E. Naruto told them. They nodded and went through their holsters for the items Naruto supplied them with when he had started inventing some new ninja tools as a hobby. Flashback. Naruto, what are you doing? Kakashi asked him. Naruto turned eight recently and took an interest in inventing new things ever since he started to learn about seals. He found out he had a talent for it because of his creativity. He created many new ninja tools that were highly effective and were now being produced and sold in all the ninja supply stores because they were now regularly used by all ranks of ninja. He produced shuriken and kunai bombs, specialized stink bombs that erased scent instead of creating it and other things. Right now he was working on something new. Creating a new ninja tool, I thought of it the other day, this is going to be a hit. I know it. Naruto grinned. And done. Naruto said and held out what looked like a smoke bomb, but was slightly larger, pure black instead of white, and had a seal design on it. What's it do? Kakashi asked very interested, his other inventions were highly useful, and many Anbu and other ninja talked about his inventions when they first were introduced, least to say that Naruto's new hobby was highly appreciated by many ninja. It's a flash bomb with a sound seal, it created a high-pitched noise that disorients the senses and blinds the enemy at the same time. I gotta go get this approved by Jiji. Take this and show it to everyone else, just channel a bit of chakra into it and chuck it in the air, I suggest you get down on your stomach, and the moment you do, cover your ears and close your eyes, unless you want to feel the effects that is, Naruto smirked and handed one to Kakashi and Shunshined away. Kakashi managed to gather all available Anbu and Jounin into training ground 13. What's this about? A random Jounin asked. Well, it seems like Naruto invented a new toy for us to play with. Kakashi grinned. The gathered ninja were chattering excitedly. Well here we go. Kakashi eye smiled, he took out a black ball, channeled a bit of chakra like Naruto said, and chucked it high above the gathered ninja's heads, and they all looked up at it, wondering what it was going to do. Kakashi quickly got on his stomach like he was told, and quickly covered his ears and closed his eyes. Even with his closed eyes he could see a bright light shine through his eyelids. A soft ringing sound hung in the air, and he opened his eyes, deeming himself safe from harm, only to see all the gathered ninja blinded and struggling to stand up straight, only to fall down again from lack of sense of balance. A few moments later everyone seemed to have recovered from the effects. I am totally going to buy these when they come out in stores. And Anbu stated. The rest of the ninja were muttering agreements and other things, seemingly too excited about how effective these would be during missions to have cared what had just occurred. A few weeks later the newly dubbed Sonic Flash Bombs were being sold in all ninja stores and were being bought very quickly by ninja of every rank. Naruto, Kakashi, Tenzo, and Abito came up with new plans and tactics for future missions, had created Plan E. Emergency Escape. Throw a Sonic Flash Bomb, when enemies are blinded, have Abito cast aspect of the pack to run away, while pumping chakra into the legs to increase speed, while Naruto created cage bushins and hinged into them. Distracting enemies when the bushins scattered while they escaped. Flashback end, the trio got ready, Naruto and Tenzo threw sonic flash bombs at the fangirls. The bombs went off incapacitating every single fangirl, including a few unlucky bystanders in the area. Kakashi quickly summoned Abito. Abito quickly casted aspect of the pack on them, while Naruto created henge cage bushins to lead them away when they regained their senses. The boys quickly bolted across the roofs in the direction of their house. The girls quickly darted after the bushins and cried out when they grabbed them with a tackle, they dispelled in a puff of smoke. Oh, Kakashi-sama got away. A girl cried. Tenzo-sama too. Another shrieked. We were so close. Another sighed. They can't be far. Find them. A girl suggested and they all darted off in hopes of finding them. At home, we got away. Phew. Tenzo panted. Abito was laughing his ass off, rolling on the ground, clutching his sides. Damn fangirls. The same thing happened last year, but there's more of them now. Kakashi muttered. I can't believe you two have a fan club. Naruto laughed. Shut up. Kakashi and Tenzo mumbled. The next day, Naruto woke up, ate breakfast and got ready to go to the academy. Hold on Naruto, I'm coming with you. Tenzo said. Hey, sure Tenzo Nyasen. Naruto said. Have a good day Naruto-chan, try not to show off your abilities or get in trouble okay. Kakashi smiled and patted Naruto's head. I won't Kakashi Nyachan. Jeez, you guys are sounding like my parents. Naruto rolled his eyes. We're your older brothers. We have been looking after you since you were five remember? Tenzo corrected. Yeah yeah, Naruto mumbled. Kakashi Ajichan. Abito shouted playfully while poking Kakashi. Naruto and Tenzo were trying to muffle their laughter but failed in the end. Kakashi looked crestfallen and crouched in the corner with a cloud over his head, mumbling I'm not old, or I'm just 24, while poking some mysterious mushrooms with a stick that was growing on an old log which came from who knows where. The two sweat dropped. 
Then Zo and Naruto headed out to the academy. The academy, dear you are Naruto-kun, be good okay. Tenzo smiled and ruffled his hair. Don't worry. Naruto grinned and ran inside. Tenzo shook his head and headed back home to train with Kakashi. Naruto went inside looking for room 201 like the Hokage told him. He found the room and opened the door to see a lot of kids, many he could recognize had a resemblance to their parents. Um, the kid with the dog on his head is definitely an Inuzuka, the one that is sleeping seems to be Inara, the kid eating chips is Akamichi, the raven-haired one that is the eye candy of most of the girls in this clan, must be Ichiha Sasuke. He has a surprising calm aura despite what happened last year. Flashback, Saratobi gathered his Jown and Anbu along with Team Tyre in his office, the massacre of the Ichiha clan was devastating. I'm sure you have figured out about the massacre of the Ichiha clan. Saratobi started. The Gather Ninja were whispering and muttering amongst themselves. The one responsible was Ichiha Shisui. His mental stability was very questionable on his last exam. Saratobi stated. Is the whole clan gone sir? Ajaunin asked. No, Shisui was about to strike down Ichiha Sasuke, but Itachi arrived home and intercepted in time to prevent his death, Itachi managed to fend off Shisui, but was tired from the mission he was just assigned and couldn't go after him when he ran off. Ichiha Shisui is now an S-class missing nin. Itachi and Sasuke are the only survivors. Saratobi sighed. Flashback end. Inada is here, also that kid with the high collar coat and sunglasses is probably an Aburam. The platinum blonde girl is definitely the daughter of Inoichi, she looks just like him except a girl. Excuse me, I'm the new student. Naruto said at the brown-haired teacher with a scar along his nose. He turned around to look at Naruto. Ah you must be the new student the Hokage told me about, Yuzumaki Naruto right? My name is Iruka by the way. Yup that's me and nice to meet you. Naruto grinned. Why does he get to join us now? We've been in the academy two years longer than him. A pink-haired girl screeched so loudly that Naruto had to cover his ears. What the hell is with that girl? The screeching of that banshee is killing me. Seriously? Some of us here have better hearing than others, the Inuzuka and his dog even hated. A lot of the class were trying to recover from the sudden outburst of the girl. Because the Hokage told me he was tutored by his older brothers and I've told you to stop doing that Sakura. Haruka scolded. The girl shrunk back into her seat. Now why don't you introduce yourself Naruto? My name is Yuzumaki Naruto, I like my friends, Jiji, Raymond, and my Ani Sans, I dislike arrogance, fangirls, spoiled brats, traitors, rapists, perverts, and liars. My hobbies include studying medicine, training with my Ani Sans and friends, gardening, and inventing new things, my dream is to be the greatest Hokage ever, even surpassing the Yandame. Naruto exclaimed. Most of the class laughed at Naruto except Inara, Akamichi, Inuzuka, and the Aburam clan heirs, Hinata looked pissed. Stop laughing. You don't see me laughing at your dreams. Naruto shouted angrily at them which shut them up. Naruto, take a seat beside Shino, could you raise your hand Shino? Haruka asked and Shino raised his hand. Naruto took his seat. Well you know who I am, what's your name? Naruto asked. Aburam Shino, I use my clan techniques with involved Kikai bugs. Shino replied. That's so cool. You must know a lot about bugs right? Naruto grinned. Shino was slightly shocked that someone said his clan techniques with bugs were cool, he was used to being called weird or gross or something along those lines. Yes, our clan collects and keeps bugs we find to see if we can create breed a new branch of Kikai bugs. Then I'm sure you can help me. Naruto smiled. You see, I have this garden full of medicinal herbs I use for medicine, but some of them are being eaten or destroyed by insects, and I don't want to use pesticide because it will harm the animals and good insects that live there. You think you can help me out? Yes I would be honored, I may find new insects that will benefit the clan, Kanoha does not have many outdoor herb gardens, as most of them are off limits or in greenhouses sprayed with pesticide. It will be interesting to see what insects live in your garden. Is some time after the academy suitable for you? Shino asked excited at the prospect of finding new insects for his clan collection. Of course. Naruto smiled. He introduced himself to more people and ended up having Sasuke and his brother, Shikamaru, Kiba and Hinata come over to his house as well, Chaoji wanted to come too, but had something to do with his clan so he couldn't come. After the academy was over, Sasuke and his brother met up at entrance along with Shino, Shikamaru, and Hinata. Naruto was waiting for his brother to pick him up. Kakashi arrived riding on Abito's back and greeted Naruto. Whoa. Is that your Ninkin? Kiba exclaimed awed by the size of Abito. The others were quite amazed by the sight as well. Kakashi got off Abito's back. You could say that, Kakashi said as Abito rolled his eye. Hey Kakashi Nyachin. They are coming over to our house okay? Naruto asked. Sure, why not? Kakashi smiled. And they all headed towards their house. At home, they all arrived at the house, and Naruto led them into the a clearing in the forest near their house. 
the Garden Naruto created and took care of resided there to prevent any plants from being damaged from their training they would sometimes do in the backyard. The garden was absolutely huge and fenced with Tenzo's wood abilities and was booming with life from various animals, insects, and plants. Shino had a glint in his eye and started to tend to Naruto's bug problem immediately, the speed at which he left to do so was shocking, and they sweat dropped. You guys, I got something important to ask you. Naruto said and they all paid attention to what he was saying. Well I want you guys to join Team Tyre. Naruto bluntly said. By the way, Hinata, myself, Kakashi Nai and Tenzo Nai are already part of it. They dropped their jaws and agreed immediately after hearing about it. Naruto explained everything them saying that they were worthy candidates of the new powers that came along with being part of the team and explained all about spirit beasts and such. Naruto told Kiba that Akamaru could be his partner if he made the vows when Kaiubi told him it was possible, but only on animals other than humans. Kiba was delighted about that. He also told them that they could tell their parents or close family members about it, but they have to keep it a secret. They agreed to those terms. As instructed, they each took Naruto's hand and made the bond. Different designs of tattoos appeared on their bodies. Sasuke's was on his neck, Itachi's on his right bicep, Shikamaru's on his left bicep, Shino's was on his right hand, and Kiba's on his collarbone. Okay guys, just like I told you. Naruto instructed. Itachi, you first. I summon forth my destined spirit beast. Itachi said and a very large raven the size of Niji's falcon, appearing in a burst of fire before him. Why do you wish for my power Itachi? The raven asked. I want the power to protect my brother and this village. Itachi calmly said. I accept the resolve you have shown me. I accept you as my master as long as you stay true to the resolution you have presented me, you may name me as you wish. The raven bowed. Your name shall be Mukuro. Itachi stated. The raven cawed and bowed again and disappeared into Itachi. My turn after Ani-san. Sasuke said. I summon forth my destined spirit beast. A large white tiger the same size as Suryoku burst forth and a bolt of lightning appeared. Why do you wish for my power Sasuke? The tiger glared. To protect my Nai San and friends. Sasuke shouted. The good resolve, I accept you as my master, as long as you stay true to the resolution you have presented me. Name me as you see fit. I want to name you Hakuren. Sasuke smiled. Hakuren bowed and returned into Sasuke. Kiba was next and recited the vows, tattoos appeared on Akamaru's shoulders, and he transformed into a large black three-headed dog with large claws and teeth. Whoa. Is that really you Akamaru? Kiba shouted excitedly. Akamaru nodded and returned back to his normal form. Kiba ended up nicknaming Akamaru Cerberus when he entered that form. Shino summoned his, and a very large prey mantis appeared. He named him Shiram. Shikamaru's spirit beast turned out to be a panther also the size of Suryoku, and named him Kurai. The three original members of Team Tyre wondered if all spirit beasts were supposed to be big. Denzo went to go inform the Hokage about the new members. While well, Kakashi explained the responsibilities they now had. They ended up staying for dinner, Naruto, and Tenzo's cooking was top-notch. They all left and said their goodbyes except Shino, who had a very happy aura around him while he was helping Naruto with the garden. Do you find anything new? Naruto asked him. Yes. I found many new insects in your garden I have not seen before, and I am very sure there are more to be discovered. Shino said happily. Well if you want, you and your clan can come here whenever they want, it would really help my herb garden, and you get to come and do all that bug collecting and stuff. I tend to add new medical herbs and breed new ones pretty often, so any extra help would be great. Naruto chimed. I would be delighted to Naruto. Shino accepted. Shino left for home to tell his family when it got dark, but not before collecting some more nocturnal insects. In the end, Shino or other members of the Aburum clan could be seen in Naruto's impossibly large garden of various herbs and plants, and it seemed to be booming with more life than ever. The Aburum clan were shocked at the sheer size of the garden and asked how he found time to tend to it all. Naruto replied with cage bushins. The clan was very grateful for permission to enter and work in the garden whenever they pleased, and it was even better at the fact that their clan compound was pretty near their house and garden. They ended up finding various new insects they even the oldest members, saying that they haven't seen it before or haven't seen a bug like that one in years. Apparently Naruto's garden was the ideal residence of many uncommon and rare insects, which was great in the clan's perspective. As a thank you for their help, Naruto said that they could harvest some of the herbs for themselves if they ever needed it. Two years later, Naruto ended up just proposing to the Aburum clan they should just share the garden in which to have doubled in size from the help of the clan. They gladly agreed. Tauji joined the team and ended up with a large red boar as his spirit beast, his tattoo was on his right hand, Chaoji named his spirit beast Chaojiru. They all had their new codenames and cloaks with a team symbol on the back or on the shoulder. Their masks representing their spirit beasts also had the blue markings representing that they were part of the team. 
Itachi was codenamed Raven, Sasuke. Tiger, Shikamaru. Panther, Shino. Mantis, and Chaoji. Or. The clan heads were rather happy that their kids joined the specialized legendary ninja squad. Itachi and Sasuke's teamwork was almost as good as Kakashi, Naruto, and Tenzo's. The trio perfected even more combinations and came up with new plans. Naruto created some more new ninja tools. One of the more popular ones were the instant jutsu seals. All you have to do was let the seal absorb a jutsu to store it away. Then when you want to use it just channel a bit of chakra into the seal and the jutsu was casted, they were also reusable which was greatly appreciated. Hinata and Naruto's medic studies were great, Hinata turned out to be a genius in the arts, and Naruto was just a bit behind, even if he wasn't talented as Hinata, he made it up with hard work and determination. Hinata's water-style Jiuikin was nearly perfected, and she started to teach it to other members of the clan that were not proficient in the regular style of Jiuikin. Shikamaru and Chaoji's teamwork was coming along nicely as well as Hinata, Kiba, and Shino synchronization. Naruto and Sasuke were rivals, but were also a deadly pair in because of their teamwork with each other. Hiyashi was working quite well with Niji and Hinata. Anko and Naruto meant disaster for any enemy they came across. Naruto was still called to Anbu HQ for emergency cases, and Hinata started to occasionally work in the hospital. It was finally graduation exam day, even though the members of Team Tyre knew they were going to pass hands down. The members of Team Tyre all passed with perfect grades. They left to celebrate at Naruto's house. Naruto decided he should check on his garden, and Shino came along as well, he recently made a cave for mushrooms, moss and other cave plants, he passed through the garden, while Shino went to work beside his father, reading a few of the Aburum clan that were working there and went towards his cave, he figured he should leave the plants in there to grow on their own for a few months. But when he went inside he was absolutely shocked. Everything in here is glowing. Is that bug glowing too? What the hell? I think some of the plants bred during the few months and created bioluminescent plants and mushrooms, did you see what I see? Naruto saw more light coming from the back of the cave and carefully making way there to find, is that a glowing hive? God alert the Shino and his family. Shino? Naruto shouted as he ran out of the cave. Shino and the rest of the Aburums were alerted. When he got to him you gotta see what happened. And Naruto explained about the fact of the cave he created for new plants. There is something else isn't there Naruto, Shino stated. It wouldn't be the first time Naruto created amazing new herbs and plants, edible or non-edible, which attracted foreign bugs, much to the delight of the Aburum clan. There, yeah, Naruto started. It's glowing. What? Shino confused as were the other clan members working in the garden that joined in the conversation. All the plants in the cave are glowing, even the bugs, but there's more. Naruto exclaimed flailing his hands. Glowing? Shibi shocked, never in his life did he ever come across glowing plants, much less insects that weren't fireflies. Yeah there's this really big glowing hive at the back of the cave you gotta see. Naruto shouted and ran off to the cave, and the clan instantly followed. They were in shock at the glowing mushrooms. There was even glowing centipede and moths. But the one clan member started. Shino and I along with Naruto will examine this glowing hive of his, the rest of you get to work on these new plants and insects. Shibi ordered. They nodded and went off to examine the cave, seeing how it was a narrow tunnel, then a big room, and another tunnel that curved off into another room in which the hive was located. The cave was rather damp with a little stream along the right wall. The light came in from the small holes on the ceiling which the light from the outside added to the beauty of the cave. This way. Naruto said and led them to the second room of the cave. What the two members of clan were expecting, it wasn't this. Oh my, Shibi startled at the glowing hive, his and Shino's eyes started to sparkle. Have you seen anything like this father? Shino asked while he was examining one of the hives hanging from the ceiling, examining some of the insects crawling around it. Eyes, I think I see the queen or something, Naruto sputtered pointing at a particularly large insect that seemed to be a hybrid of a prey mantis and a beetle, it was standing on four legs, it was neon blue with some black specks, the back of the insect was pointing up in the air. The head had small horns and glowing eyes with pincers. It was three times the size of Akamaru. I think I know what this is, Shibi stated. Father? Shino asked. This race of insects were supposed to be extinct. Shibi exclaimed. They're called Rakshiri, a warrior race of insects that were used by the first Aburums, but went extinct when the clan war ended because they were all killed, to think a few survived and some stray eggs that were forgotten until now, the eggs of the Rakshiri only hatch in certain conditions and will wait for as long as needed, and it seems Naruto-kun's cave was an ideal living condition. All of the Rakshiri lived in harmony with our late clan members and are very loyal. Maybe these ones might remember us after the all these years, Shibi then approached the queen and lightly touched its head. The queen made some weird clicking sounds, and Shibi smiled. She remember us. She no brightened at the prospect of his ancestor's insect partners being revived again. Thank you Naruto-kun, we of the Aburum clan are of great debt to you. 
Shibi thanked him. Hey, hey, it was by accident, since you know about these guys, Naruto said and pointed at the queen, I leave this entire cave to you, though I'm still going to come in here and examine the new plants that I have seemed to have accidentally bred, that's fine and thank you. Shibi nodded. The entire Aburam clan were in high spirits of the Rakshiri returning again, and almost all of the clan visited them in the cave and helped the queen care for her hive. During this, Team Tyre were eating dinner prepared mostly by Tenzo and the help of Hinata. I wonder who's going to be on each team, Naruto wondered. The next day at the academy, the youngest members of the team sat together in the classroom. Sasuke sitting by the window surrounded by his friends and secret teammates was happy, mainly because all of his fangirls couldn't get seats near them as Shino and Naruto were sitting beside him. Shino was telling Naruto about the new discoveries his clan made concerning the mysterious glowing insects and the Rakshiri. Ino and Sakura came in at the same time screeching that they were there first and that Sasuke-kun was theirs, then all the fangirls erupted into argument over Sasuke. Naruto and the rest of his secret team members including Kaiubi were trying to tune out the sound and regain their hearing back to normal until Naruto started to leak some killing intent from annoyance. His teammates were scared and dove under their desks, even Shino and Shikamaru recognized the time to hide and dove to hide beside Sasuke who was cowering in fear. All of his friends knew about Naruto's temper, even though he was very tolerant and patient, when he snapped he was absolutely terrifying. Will you shut the fuck up you goddamn banshees? It's annoying to hear that every goddamn day. You are staining the title of Kanoichi you useless stupid fangirls. So do you us all a favor and shut the hell up before I make you shut up permanently. Naruto shouted with absolute malice and a hint of demonic sound, courtesy of the Kaiubi, in his voice, and killing intent was just rolling off of him in waves. For added effect, his eyes were red and slitted. His friends knew of him being the jailer of the Kaiubi and couldn't care less about it. All of the fangirls fainted and fortunately, so did Sakura and Ino. Shino, Shikamaru, Sasuke, Hinata, Kiba, and Chaoji already had their first kill from missions assigned directly for the members of Team Tyre, so they weren't as affected by Naruto's killing intent, but that didn't mean they weren't scared. All the extra training they did also paid off to help in their tolerance of it. Naruto instantly calmed down and sat back in his chair. His friends deemed it safe to come out of hiding and returned into their seats. Iruka then walked in to see all the girls just waking up or still fainted. What happened? They wouldn't shut up. Everyone who didn't faint said at the same time. I see, anyways, it's time for team assignments. Team 1, Iruka said and started announcing the teams. Team 7 will be, Yuzumaki Naruto, Naruto perked up at his name being called. Ichiha Sasuke, him and Sasuke did a high five. And Haruno Sakura. Iruka finished to see Sasuke with a horrified look on his face, and Naruto repeatedly bang his head on his desk. Oh yeah. True love conquers all. Sakura squealed making them cover their ears again. The mate consists of Hayuga Hinata, Aburam Shino, and Inuzuka Kiba. The three sighed in relief that they were with each other, seeing as their teamwork was top-notch, and they were great friends. Though they pitied Sasuke and Naruto for having the pink banshee, they nicknamed her on their team. Team 9 is still in circulation. Team 10 will be Yamanaka Ino, Akamichi Chaoji, and Nara Shikamaru. Iruka finished. Ino screeched at the fact that she will be on the same team as them, in which their ears were ringing from the sudden high-pitched sound. Chaoji and Shikamaru though glad to be on the same team, sighed at the fact they got the blonde banshee, they nicknamed her as well. Then the door opened for some Jounins to walk in and collected their teams. Team 10 were picked up by Asuma, which he was aware of who was on Team Tyre. Soon Team 7 and 8 were the only ones in the classroom. One hour later, where is our sensei? Sakura screamed. Making the rest of them cover their ears, again. Didn't I tell you to shut up already? Naruto scowled. You can't tell me what to do Naruto Baka. She screeched. Hinata pulled out some earplugs and handed them to everyone but Sakura, which they gladly accepted and put them in. The remark that Sakura screeched pissed them off, Naruto wasn't an idiot, he was a genius like Shikamaru, though a more practical kind of genius, especially when it came to creating something new and unexpected. Kiba, will you do the honors? Sasuke asked. Of course my friend. Kiba chimed and knocked Sakura unconscious. Thank God, Naruto sighed. Well judging from the time, I have a good guess who is our sensei. They knew of Kakashi's punctuality since they were fed the most retarded late excuses from both Abito and him. Tenzo on the other hand was always on time or late by roughly an hour because he was dragging Kakashi to the meeting place. The door opened to reveal Tenzo, Kakashi, and Abito. Sorry we're late, I got kidnapped by a mad clowns that were looking for another human attraction, and Tenzo here came to my rescue, and because of our awesome Jounin skills, we were able to escape but ran into Mario, and had to help him save Princess Peach from Boser, so we all hopped on a Yashi to save her, and using our super secret ninja techniques, saved Princess Peach, and then we realized how late we were and rushed over here as fast as we could. 
Kakashi explained with an eye smile, while Libido was full blown out laughing at this point. Their jaws were on the floor by the sheer stupidity and the unbelievably horrid excuse that Kakashi had given them. At least make it believable. Kiba pointed out. Yeah Kakashi you have to admit it was pretty far off, at least try and make it believable and unbelievable at the same time. Abito sniggered. So Tenzo Niasen, what really happened? Naruto asked regaining his composure, slightly. We got caught up in our training and didn't notice that it was past the meeting time until about 10 minutes to an hour late, so we rushed here. Tenzo said truthfully after recovering from Kakashi's retarded late excuse. Anyways meet us at training ground 7, and Shun shined off. Sakura woke up in time to hear instructions. They shrugged and shunshined to training ground 7, leaving Sakura behind. The bee continued. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next.